This is part three of the three-part series on producing a book-matched sides and back panels for guitars using the bandsaw and the AccuSlice system. Part one of this video series was the introduction to the slicing of the guitar backs and sides on the bandsaw, in which I described the AccuSlice system, its setup, and its operation. In part two of this video series, I described the slicing of the book-matched panels that could be used for the sides of guitars. In this part three, we will be following the same format as in part two, but I'll be slicing these wider boards, which are eight and a quarter inch wide by 22 inch long, which will be used for the backs of guitars. Again, I'll be cutting a variety of woods in this project, including maple, mahogany, wangi, and cherry. These same techniques could also be used to slice the top panels for guitars. After I completed these three videos on slicing the book match panels for guitar backs and sides, I summarized the results of what I learned in a fourth video entitled Lessons Learned and Tips for the AccuSlice System. Here's a list of the topics that will be discussed and demonstrated in this video. It includes lessons learned during the production of these three videos, plus additional tips from many of my previous project videos. Okay, I'm ready to start cutting this piece of maple board uh, to make some guitar backs. And this board is eight and a quarter inches tall by 22 inches long. And I changed the blade here. The blade on here now is a 16th per inch half inch wide blade. Um, and previously when I did the guitar sides, I used a 8 and 10 teeth per inch blades, but because this wood is 8 inches thick, I went to the 6 teeth per inch. A little bit coarser blade, should give me a little bit coarser cut. I also did one thing different in setting this up. I did not use a spacer underneath the sacrificial fence. The wood board goes right to the very bottom of the sacrificial fence, and I adjusted it such that I attached the sacrificial fence with some clamps, so it rests right on the table and then screw it in place. So this thing slides actually resting on the table now. So that should minimize any vibrations. Yeah, I just moved the camera to the other side of the bandsaw and I did turn off the headlights so you can see the reflection of the bandsaw laser uh, on the board. So it shows exactly where I'll be cutting. So you make sure your fingers don't go there. But that's no problem because actually my fingers are way down here. So that's a much safer way to cut these boards. So again, I'm cutting all these boards 125 thousandths inch thick. I'm mean, making a match uh, set of bookends. And again, I'm using a 16th per inch blade, half inch wide blade. And I'm cutting quite slowly, because again, the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. This is the actual real-time cutting speed. As you can see, I'm cutting very slowly, because the slower you cut, definitely the smoother the cut. And by cutting slowly, you're allowing that bandsaw blade to act like a plane and actually smooth out the surface of the cut. Also by cutting slowly you're allowing more time for the sawdust to clear from the gullets in the bandsaw blade and prevent gumming up of the bandsaw blade. Now I just increased the video viewing speed 10 times to reduce your viewing time for watching this video. But please be aware that this is not the actual cutting speed. I use the same procedures to cut a second board to the same 125 thousandths inch thick and then I'll follow up by cutting the remainder of the board to the same panel sizes. And once again, there's our matched set of panels out of this maple. And that finish is really good. And I do think having this board resting on the table reduces vibration gives a little better cut. I continued to slice 125 thousandths inch thick panels from the larger maple board. At the end I had some wood remaining, so as a final cut I sliced a panel 20 thousandths of an inch thick. Note that this piece of wood being sliced is 8 and a quarter inches wide by 22 inches long by 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So this is my board. I, I set this to 20 thousandths coming off the bandsaw and it measures right around 19 thousandths, 18 thousandths going the other side. You got 19 thousandths, 18 thousandths. So it's, you know, 19 thousandths plus or minus 2 thousandths of an inch. You know, edge to edge, top to bottom, perfectly flat. 
These six boards are starting out at about 120 thousandths, and I'll see how much I need to take off to take all these saw marks out. Saw marks aren't too bad. Not near as bad if you uh, used a, a fence on a bandsaw. So we'll see if you need to get these perfectly smooth to get a good finished surface on both sides. I'm using the Supermax board sander with 60 grit sandpaper to sand both sides of each board. I'm only sanding off two to three thousandths in each pass through the drum sander. So I'll be taking multiple passes of each surface through the drum sander. Again, this video is sped up. And there's our finished boards. And these all measure about 100 thousandths thick now. So I took about 20 thousandths off. I think that coarser blade uh, took a little more wood off. But uh, by about 20 thousandths for uh, getting rid of the saw marks. And that's perfectly smooth, ready for ready for finishing, just hand sanding. In this next board, I have a piece of cherry. Again, a cherry is about eight and a quarter inches tall by 22 inches long, mounted on the sacrificial fence. And I did sand the bottom smooth, so the sacrificial fence and the cherry board are perfectly flat against one another. And the mounting is a little bit different. Instead of using the space underneath, I'm actually letting it ride right on the table. And what I'm doing is I'm getting two clamps, clamping the board to the carriage. Then I'll drill the holes in that. And what this does is the board won't move now as I'm drilling the holes and tightening them up. So this is riding flat on, flat on the table. And what that'll do, that'll minimize vibration because you won't have no vibration. The board will be flat against the, uh, the table. So now it's clamped in place, I'll go and drill the holes and, and mount it. Once again, I sped up the video in this section. Uh, but I did pre-drill all the pilot holes for the screws, and I did use all 10 screws to mount the board to the carriage. What I did miss here is I forgot to uh, turn the uh, bag jig clamps to lock the index table to the bandsaw table. This would have eliminated the movement of the index table as I'm driving the screws. After the sacrificial fence has been secured to the carriage, I removed the clamps. These self-adjusting clamps are great for doing some of this stuff. So now, right on the table with no binding. The reason I used the strip in the past is to eliminate binding, because sometimes the board might be might not be perfectly flat or straight, and it can bind, especially if you're doing long boards. The board's longer than the table. It's more than usual. And this board just a little bit longer than the table. It slides on there real nice. So once again. Set my gauge to zero. Turn on my laser beam. Cut off my piece of scrap wood. This first slice is about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. The purpose of this cut is just to give me a perfectly flat surface. As a result, all subsequent cuts will be perfectly parallel to this surface. After this first cut, I slice two panels, each 125 thousandths inch thick, for the guitar back panels. And there's our book match cherry panels. A pretty nice smooth surface. And they measure like 123 thousandths thick. So that'll be my two sides. I'll start two pieces for the back. Now I've not enough wood left to make another uh, two pieces, so I'm going to make some thinner pieces. Since I did not have enough wood left to slice another set of guitar backs, I sliced two additional thinner panels. The first panel was sliced to 100 thousandths inch thick, and the second panel was sliced to 50 thousandths of an inch thick. These thinner panels will be used for other projects in my shop, such as some of my Dizzy Bowl projects. And 
And so there I cut two boards 125 thousandths inch thick. This third piece was 100 thousandths inch thick. And this final piece was 50 thousandths inch thick. They had these two cherry boards now that measured about 123 thousandths coming off the bandsaw. So let me see how much you need to take off to get these perfectly smooth. The panels were sanded as shown previously, sanding off two to three thousandths off each surface with each pass to the board sander. Okay, now those two boards measure between 103 and 105 thousandths. So again, we took off about 20 thousandths to get the uh, saw marks out. But these are, you know, all you need is a little bit of hand sanding and they're, they're perfectly smooth. And this next board is a piece of mahogany. Again, it's attached to a sacrificial fence. And I'm going to mount it the same way. I, I did sand the bottom flush so it'll rest on the table. I mounted the board to the carriage using the same process as shown previously for the cherry board, so I did not repeat it here. Again, I sliced off a 20 thousandths inch slice to give me a flat surface. Then I sliced two additional panels each 125 thousand inch thick for the guitar backs. Afterwards I continued to slice off additional panels to use the entire mahogany board. Okay, we're starting out with these mahogany boards. They're uh, about 120 thousand inch thick. So we'll see how much we take off to get them down and get rid of all the existing saw marks. The panels were sanded as shown previously sanding off two to three thousandths off each surface with each pass to the board sander. Now there's the finished boards after sanding and they sand it down to like 102 to 103 thousandths. So again, just around 20 thousandths need to be cut off uh, to get them down and all that needs now is hand sanding. And that's both sides were sanded. This next board I'm cutting uh, is a piece of wangi, and again, it's about eight and a half inches tall, 22 inches long. This could be used for some guitar backs. Now, I did just change the blade. Uh, the previous blade was getting uh, pretty dull, and I know this wangi is going to be kind of tough cutting. So this is, again, a half inch wide blade, six teeth per inch. And I adjusted it, the board slides on the table. So Again, I sliced off a scrap board about 20 thousandths of an inch thick to provide a flat surface. This wangi board was about two inches thick, so I then proceeded to slice 10 additional panels, each 125 thousandths of an inch thick, for the guitar sides for this video. Once again, here's our matched bookends. Nice grain in that uh, wingy. When I got down to the end of the board, I did have some wingy wood left, so I sliced a panel 50 thousandths of an inch thick. Notice that the thin panel is warping as it sliced off the larger board. Okay, this sort of indicates why it's important to glue that board to a sacrificial fence. Because you can see what happened with that as it came off the band saw, it bowed. And that's because this is not quarter sawn wood, it's plain sawed. And uh, as a result, as I cut it off the board, it did start to warp. But in cutting it, it's 50 thousandths there, and 52 thousandths there. So it's within two thousandths of an inch thickness from edge to edge, even though it's bowed. But that can be straightened out when I go to use it. So this is why it's important to glue that board to a sacrificial fence. Because if that wasn't glued, as I was cutting this off, this board would be warping. And I wouldn't have these perfectly straight and parallel boards, you know, edge to edge. So by keeping that flat, it's, it stays flat until it's cut off. And as it cuts off, it will, it will bow on you. But I'll store that flat to keep it, you know, flat as I'm storing it until I use it. 
So I get one more board on this thing. I think I can get a 25,000 series. And there's the final piece that came off of that. That's 25,000 inch thick, edge to edge, top to bottom. Uh, perfectly, perfectly straight. And once again, it did bow because it's pretty thin wood and it's not uh, quarter sawn wood. But this can be uh, used for projects, for some uh, inlays or some bands for some dizzy bowl projects I'll be making in the future. And I have about. Uh, about 10,000 wood left on that uh, board, which is lost. I can just run this through the board sander or planer to get rid of it to reuse this piece of paper up. So let me go ahead and run these through my uh, board sander again to see how much wood I need to take off to get rid of all the saw marks to give you perfectly smooth boards. And once again, I'm sanding both sides of the boards, taking off about three thousandths of an inch off each surface with each pass through the board sander. Okay, there's the uh, finished sanded boards coming off the board sander and I measured around these on a couple boards and they vary between like 103 and 107 thousandths. So once again we took off about 15 thousandths of wood and sanding both sides of that board. They look pretty good. This concludes this three part video series on slicing the book mat side and back panels for guitars and other projects. In this part three of the video series, I sliced match book in guitar backs from two and a quarter by 22 inch long blocks of wood. I sliced about 20.125 inch thick boards and a number of thinner panels from a variety of woods including maple, cherry, mahogany, and wenge. The resulting sliced panels were perfectly flat and parallel edge to edge and top to bottom to within plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. Cutting mullet boards to the same settings likewise produced boards that were reproducible and accurate in thickness. I switched to a six teeth per inch by one half inch wide bandsaw blade for this project because I was slicing between an eight and a quarter to an eight and a half inch thick boards. This blade produced fairly smooth cuts on the boards with no gumming up of the bandsaw blade. However, after cutting the maple cherry and finding the mahogany board, I started to see some minor smoking as I was cutting the last of the mahogany boards. Therefore I did install a new 6 teeth per inch blade before I started to slice the wangi boards. After slicing the boards, I ran them through a board sander to determine how much wood needs to be sanded off to obtain a finished smooth surface on both sides of the panels. I determined that around 10 thousandths of an inch needs to be sanded off each surface or face of the sliced boards in order to remove any bandsaw blade marks from the surfaces of the sliced boards. After I completed these three videos on slicing the book match panels for guitar backs and sides, I summarized the results of what I learned in a fourth video entitled Lessons Learned and Tips for the AccuSlice System. Here's a list of the topics that will be discussed and demonstrated in this video. It includes lessons learned during the production of these three videos, plus additional tips from many of my previous project videos. Here's a set of Wenge book match side and back panels that were produced in this video series. For additional information and videos on the AccuSlice system, please go to our website. And once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please give us a call or drop us an email. We'd be glad to talk with you.